Today, we're going to be talking about a topic that is foremost on everyone's mind this season for both the computer person and non-technical person alike, Windows 10. Specifically, five reasons why it sucks. Before we dive in though, let's take a look at reasons why Windows 10 doesn't suck. Until summer 2016, Windows 10 is a free upgrade for anyone currently running a copy of Windows 7 or 8.1. This may seem like a pretty good deal on the surface, but as this video will point out, it is actually a pretty steep asking price, despite the fact that Windows upgrades have historically cost $50 to $100 or more. This ties back into the first reason why Windows 10 doesn't suck, but I'll reiterate it anyway. If you were a fan of Metro apps, but not the price of upgrading to Windows 8 or 8.1, this might be a compelling reason, and possibly one of the only reasons to upgrade from 7. Personally, the only Metro app I have any desire to use is Metro Minesweeper, but there may be other useful selections in Microsoft's App Store, too. This boils down to personal preference more than anything, though. This isn't really an improvement over Windows 8 or 8.1, but I'm trying to be generous here and give some benefit of the doubt, so I'll mention it anyway. The sound scheme that Windows 10 does come with doesn't suck. It's not as good as the one that came with Windows 8, which was arguably the best soundscape ever to come with a version of Windows, but it is acceptable. The fun feature originally released in Windows 7 for quickly resizing windows has finally been improved to allow the snapping of applications into the corners of the screen in addition to just the sides. Not much to say here. It looks marginally better than Windows 8.1's login screen, but it still lacks the pizzazz of Vista's and 7's. One of the only areas where Windows 10 actually improves over any previous version of Windows is at the command line interface. The command prompt has now been upgraded to support resizing to any resolution and also has a more pleasant default font. If you spend the majority of your time in Windows at the command line, this is actually a pretty compelling reason to upgrade. still as ugly as the Windows 8 and 8.1 installer. This is one area where Vista and 7 just did it better. I'd say this is about on par with the setup for Windows XP. Also, the installer, which seemed to take forever on my machine, never asked me to name my computer, choose a work group, or set the time zone, so when I finally got logged in, the time was wrong and the computer was fairly difficult to identify on the network. Now I know where to find those settings, but many people don't, so this is one of those things that could really represent a stumbling block for the non-technical crowd. So much for, you're already an expert. Yeah, I know, we haven't even signed in yet and we're having problems. Perhaps this is Microsoft's way of foreshadowing or something. Anyway, Redmond managed to screw up something as minor as the witty messages that appear while the computer is starting up or shutting down that were originally introduced in Windows 8. The text is still intact, but it's smaller and eclipsed by a comically huge loading ring that just looks goofy compared to the slick loading rings that have been a staple on everything from Vista to 8.1. There's no beating around the bush here. The start menu is one of the most important parts of the Windows experience. Unfortunately, start in Windows 10 is worse than in almost any other version of Windows. Now I know I'm in the minority on this one because I was one of the few that didn't mind the Windows 8 start menu. This was because it did basically everything that the Windows 7 start menu did and did it with style and beautifully slick animations even though it took on a radically different full screen appearance, which apparently threw off almost everyone except for me. Windows 10's start menu does none of the above. The icons are gritty and roughly animated compared to their Windows 8 counterparts, 
and its left side is almost completely uncustomizable. And what's up with that tiny, pathetic start button? Now, in my Windows 10 technical preview first look video from last year, I praised the test build's flexible interface, but Microsoft unfortunately scrapped it in favor of this monstrosity. The only redeeming qualities here are the recent apps, if you use that feature, I didn't, and the ability to customize the tile area more effectively without things jumping around and rearranging themselves one way when you're trying to arrange them another way. Also, Start now has a pleasant glass effect, but even that is not enough to atone for Microsoft's sins against the Start menu. While Windows 8.1 and its predecessors could be managed almost exclusively through the control panel, Windows 10 seriously gimps this feature. The most annoying way in which it does so is by making the control panel ridiculously difficult to find without using the search feature, and when you do find it, there are a few tools that are missing altogether, the most notable of which is Windows Update. Windows Update is now part of the Metro control panel and loses quite a bit of functionality in and of itself, requiring use of the Group Policy Editor just to change the settings, but that's another topic for another day. Because of the fact that some of the control panel elements are missing, you are forced to switch between the control panel and the Metro control panel to manage the computer which means sometimes this jarring transition has to be made multiple times just to change settings. With that in mind, many of the control panel features have been ported to Metro Control Panel, but this represents a fairly steep learning curve by hiding all of the options behind various categories. The fifth reason why Windows 10 sucks is its visual style. In the past, I criticized Windows 8's visual style for its lack of transparency and pathetic looking window controls, but now I think Microsoft is just trolling us. Not only do you not get to choose the ugly solid color of the trim, the controls to exit, restore, maximize, or minimize a window are beyond boring and downright painful to look at. Like with Windows 8.1 and 8, tweaks and fixes are available to help alleviate this problem but they're all flawed and incomplete in some way. Microsoft, if you're listening, the solution to this problem is easy. Just bring back the Windows 8 release preview theme, the one that had transparency, square windows, and metro buttons. I would argue that it was the best Windows visual style ever, period. It has even been unofficially backported to Windows 7, where it looks equally fantastic. Not only would the 8RP style on Windows 10 meet the demands of so many who have complained about the look of Windows over the past three years, it fits the Metro style perfectly and even makes Windows look respectable and powerful. I am intentionally not answering the should you upgrade to Windows 10 question because that depends largely on what you use your computer for and if your current operating system meets those needs or not. If you're using Windows 8.1 and are happy with it despite its lackluster visual style and don't spend an undue amount of your time at the command line or wishing you could snap apps into the corner of your screen, then I would recommend not upgrading. If you're using Windows 7 and don't care about Metro apps, but just want a refreshing new theme to revitalize the experience, check out the aforementioned release preview theme linked to in the video description. If you're one of the hardcore few still rocking Vista, I'd say you're also probably good where you're at unless you really want to play Metro Minesweeper, in which case a virtual machine of Windows 10 or 8.1 might be a better choice. If you're running XP on an older computer, Windows 10 really has nothing to offer you. Instead, I would invite you to check out the Royale or Zune visual styles, which are arguably the best Windows XP themes ever made. If you're thriving with OS X or Linux, please pardon Microsoft's mess for the time being. There's little to see here. The only case in which I might actually recommend Windows 10 
is if you're building a secondary computer from scratch that currently lacks an operating system and you don't mind tweaking a bit to get things to look a little better. There are a number of other aspects of Windows 10, both good and bad, that I did not cover because they have already been discussed to death elsewhere. If you would like to learn more about virtual desktops, fake Siri, I mean Cortana, Internet Edge Explorer, the Notification Center, and Windows 10's anti-privacy features, feel free to run web searches on these topics. That said, I hope you found today's video entertaining and informative, and be sure to stay tuned to the all-new Channel 2012 for clips, reviews, guides, food, computers, general around the house, and other high-quality, high-definition uploads. Thanks for watching.